Hello, I am Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is Pastor Chris Aaron Rice of the New Life Evangelistic Center. Today on the Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. Pastor Rice, how are you, sir? I'm doing really well. You're looking really well. well thank you. You're doing a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of things here at New Life Evangelist Center. Tell me some of your duties, Chris. Yeah, I do have uh, quite a few responsibilities here at New Life. Um, I work in the business administrative office where mm -hmm. um, I'm, I play some of the roles of corporate secretary and um, kind of... Um, protect New Life and its interests um, at, in terms of relationships with different businesses and organizations sure. that we use. Um, and then, so I oversee a lot of administrative offices, our responsibilities, as well as ministerial responsibilities. So right. I preach um, and I teach and I counsel and I do a whole lot here with the ladies um, and discipling people and um, at seeing them mature and grow in their faith. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big part of what I do. Recently in the news, I've seen that 1411 Locust Street, the New Life Evangelic Center, the home office actually where it was for so many years, is trying to reopen. Tell us the status of that, please. Yes, so we've been in litigation. Um, last year in January, the city approved our building permit to begin construction um, on on the building and get it up to code and again open it specifically as a center uh, where we can provide uh, services again. Um, but again, the whole thrust of our trying to open the building is to operate as a church. We wanted sure. to be able to have uh, assembly again and to reach the congregation that really we've, we've been striving to serve um, since that building was closed. And so we were going to provide um, a place where counseling can take place, a place where, um, where services can be offered, like uh, food and water and clothing and things like that, but as well as a resource for the community sure. to come and meet with their clients and, and to help people break the cycle of homelessness. And that was really um, our intention for that building. But within three weeks of getting that building permit, um, you know, the same group of people who really fought to get us closed appealed the decision. And from last year all the way up into this year, we've been in litigation with them. Uh, we've had hearings with the Board of Building Appeals. And then yesterday, um, the Board of Building Appeals actually decided to side with, again, uh, our enemies and revoke... Um, revoke our building permit. You know, it's ironic because the New Life Evangelistic Center was there years before these people mm -hmm. who are instigating this litigation. Years before, the New Life Evangelistic Center lives up to its name, New Life. It has given new life to so many people, so thousands of people. And I'm sure you don't even have a clue as to how many thousands you've helped and Reverend Larry Rice has helped. Why, in your heart, Chris, Aaron, do you think these people are fighting so hard to keep this building closed? I think they're fighting so hard out of a place of fear and anger. Um, they, fear, they fear the idea that if we open up this building, then it's going to look bad around their assets, right? And a lot of the people who are trying to get us closed down, have a lot of money, and they have a lot of invest in, investments in the city of St. Louis, and they consider uh, people who are experiencing homelessness to be a blight on their investments. It decreases their value. And so they're afraid to lose money, um, and they're really angry at particularly my grandfather for fighting them so hard on this um, and for continuing to point out sort of the apathy and the bigotry, really, that their fighting's hard um, really displays. 
You know, it's kind of ironic because uh, the location of 1411 Locust Street and where they're located across the street there on 15th Street are so close to the violence going on on Washington Avenue. Why aren't they fighting that? Why are they fighting something that, that you're trying to help people, to, to give them a place to bathe, to give them a place to eat, to give them a place to shelter, give them a place to, to, to worship? Why are they fighting this so, Chris? And what can we do as, as viewers to, to help? It's a really good question. Why, they, why would they fight those who are trying to help? Um, they don't like the way that we try to help and they don't think that it works and they, they consider that the kind of outreach that we're trying to help serve people, um, not just new life, but they attack really all of the different services and say, if we get rid of this, the people will just disappear. But that's not really how it works. Mm. And so, um, honestly, it's backfired on them in, in many different ways because there is less room for people uh, to really receive the resources that they need in the city of St. Louis. The city of St. Louis has never recovered the beds that were offered at 1411 Locust. Uh, and having a central location where people can gather um, to receive those services is an essential key to really breaking the cycle of homelessness. How can people help? Uh, well, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, we need prayer. That is a huge thing that we really need um, that we can continue to fight um, and, and continue to keep going. We also need your financial support. Um, it, we're really planning on continuing to fight this, and um, there's a lot of conversation right now about even trying to take this again to the federal courts. Um, because we consider that they're attacking our First Amendment right to practice our religion. Yes. And so we are in need of a good lawyer. We're in need of uh, people who are ready to come in, a, a, an attorney who can come and help us mm -hmm. um, fight this case. And we're also in need of prayer and financial support um, as we continue to How to can they reach this. you? How can they reach you and get, offer this support? Yes, please, um, if you do have uh, or know of somebody who is an attorney, who, who is really uh, skilled at fighting at the federal level, please call 314-887-8113 or email me at carice at nlecstl.org. Um, we won't give up on this for a number of different reasons. One, that building is primarily located for really serving people who are experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. And you you said it yourself, we've been there for four plus decades. Yes. And we do want to fix up the building and we do want to provide uh, a number of resources. And we've, we've done our best to really show that we're willing to fix up the building. It's just we've constantly got to battle and fight um, just for the right to practice our faith in that location. And I understand that you're not asking to be an overnight shelter anymore. You're just asking for a facility for people to come in to clean up, to wash up, to wash their clothes, to perhaps get some dinner, and and, and have prior services. I, know, I read in the paper that uh, you close the third floor and you close the fifth floor. So what more do they want? Yeah, honestly, we're really only trying to fix up the basement, the yeah. first floor and the second floor. Right. Third, fourth, and fifth floor are going to be sealed off. We are not trying to operate as a shelter. Let me be clear. We're not trying to operate as a shelter. We're trying to operate as a church. And as a church, we see that these services that we want to provide, food, clothing, counseling, uh, social care, um, financial assistance to people who need it, these are things that we really believe are essential to us practicing our faith. Chris Aaron Rice is my guest, and uh, he's uh, the pastor here at New Life Evangelist Center. He's the grandson of Reverend Larry Rice and the son of Chris Rice uh, here at New Life Evangelic Center. And actually, he grew up here <laughs> at New Life, and uh, he's continuing that, that message, that pastorship, and we need him very, very much. And we'll be right back to talk more about this after this. Will you help New Life Evangelistic Center get back into 1411 Locust Street? Your tax-deductible gifts are urgently needed at this particular time, and there's many different ways that we're working to get back in that facility. 
One of the ways is to continue to inform the community through the Bernie Hayes Show and other programs. And if you haven't supported the Bernie Hayes Show and the Work of New Life Evangelistic Center, please do it now. It's urgently needed. Your gifts are deeply appreciated. So many homeless people are waiting to get back into 1411 Locust, and so many others need the direct help that New Life is trying to provide at this time, but is facing some real financial needs. And that's why your gift is very, very important. And to express our thankfulness for all of you that are sharing your gifts, we want to send you this special Bernie Hayes Cup. It's my wife's favorite drinking cup. She loves to drink out of this cup, and this is actually the only coffee cup she wants to use is the Bernie Hayes Cup. It's something very special about this cup, and we'll send it to each one of you that share a gift of $25 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center and ask for your Bernie Hayes Cup. It's P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Your gift will not only help us get back into the 1411 Locust Building, but will help our first responders that are on the streets, the first responders that we have out there day after day, night after night. It will help keep our uh, women and children in our safe houses, continue to keep our training programs open, our worldwide mission work, whether it's in India, Haiti, Africa, so many different things the New Life Evangelistic Center is doing. In addition to NLEC TV, tell your family and friends about it. Put it on your phone. Put on your, uh, get that phone app on all your friends' phones so they can all see the Bernie Hayes Show or go to 24.2. It's your prayers and gifts that make all of this possible. I thank God for those who continue to pray for the reopening of 1411 Locust and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. There's so many obstacles we're facing as we try to help the homeless, but we're going to continue to give it to God. We're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to work, but we need you to partner with us. So again, it's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, the 63166. I thank God for each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing. Welcome back. My guest is Pastor Chris Aaron Rice of the New Life Evangelistic Center. Uh, Pastor, uh, how can people help us here at 2428 Woodson Road? First of all, tell us how you got here and why they should help you here. Yeah. So um, we have had this building for several years, and when 1411 Locust closed, we moved all of our administrative offices over to 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. And we have... Uh, provided a variety of different resources here. We provide utility assistance when, when we do have the funds to, to do that. We provide um, shelter for women for, uh, in our safe houses all throughout um, St. Louis County. We also provide discipleship. So I teach classes, my grandfather teaches, and we seek to help people grow in their faith. Um, so we're a Christian ministry and we provide a lot of different services for the women who come through our doors. Um, and so we also make our sandwiches. We make the hygiene kits. I mean, we're doing a lot sure. here in the building. Mm -hmm. And if you want to make an in-kind donation uh, of hygiene kits or materials to make sandwiches or men's clothing, things like that, please bring them at 2428 Woodson Road. We really use those on a, a weekly or daily basis. And... Another thing is um, we need help with, uh, with volunteers. People can come and engage with the women here at the Overland Center. So if you've got some time to come out and uh, minister to these ladies, we'd really, really love that. What are some of the needs that they can drop off here, such as water and so forth? Tell, tell us some of those needs that you need. Yeah, it's really, really hot. Mm -hmm. um, and so water is an essential need. You can bring uh, cases of bottled water to 2428 Woodson Road, and that's a huge need. Uh, there's also needs that people think less about, things like socks and new underwear and belts <laughs> and umbrellas and things like that that uh, we get into the hands of people who need it most. Hygiene items are always a need, and so we need things like little um, toothpaste and toothbrushes and uh, travel size deodorant and shampoo and conditioner. These are the kind of things that we put together and get into the hands of people who need them. And so uh, you can bring those things to 2428 Woodson Road uh, and we really get them into the hands of people who need it and it makes a big impact on their lives. I noticed one thing you didn't mention that uh, you give out sparingly, I mean graciously, uh, is hand sanitizer. Yes. You have some the, the key chains, hand sanitizer kits. We give out hand sanitizer. Yeah. 
Uh, we give out washcloths. We give things that people can use to wash up and um, look presentable for a job or just take care of your body. It's really difficult when you're experiencing homelessness to, uh, to have good hygiene just naturally because you don't have access to bathrooms or showers uh, like the rest of us do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just so essential that we get these items into their hands. Mm -hmm. Reverend Larry Rice has been uh, on the forefront of uh, crusading, actually, for those in need, for those poor people who are housed and so forth. And uh, your father, Chris, I remember him as a teenager playing mm -hmm records and then gospel music on channel 24 you're third generation mm -hmm. <laughs> tell us about chris aaron rice <laughs> well i you know if you had asked me seven or eight years ago if i would be doing this job i would have said no <laughs> i saw the the toll that ministry takes on a person and on a family and the burden of Crusading, as you say, is very heavy. You have to be called to this work. It's not something that you you bear lightly. And um, and God really had to wrestle with me, as He did Jacob, to lead me to the point where I said yes um, to to this job and to uh, shouldering the ministry uh, burden. And that wasn't it's something that I don't take lightly at all. Take very seriously the the impact um, and just the weight of leadership, spiritual leadership, and leading uh, another generation of people in serving as Christ does. And so I just constantly have to, to remain humble and learn a lot from my grandfather, who has such a passion and a heart for serving others. Mm -hmm. And I have that passion too. And I do feel called to this work, but, um, you know, it's, it's still challenging. It's still difficult on many days. And you have to uh, really invest in um, spiritual care quite a lot. Reverend Rice has put his life on the line many times. He believes in civil disobedience, you know, when it comes to the right. He knows uh, the issues that... Uh, oppressing the unhoused and homeless people and poor people in general. And uh, he's never faltered. Your father's never faltered. And I see you never faltering. What's your mission, Chris? My mission is um, to develop and raise and lead the church, to be the church, not just in word, but in deed, and to love people well, and in doing that, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's my mission. My mission is to, uh, to love people well, and to lead the church in loving people well. And so we try to build that bridge from the pews to those who are on the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's so much in Scripture uh, that encourages and commands us to um, to alleviate the suffering of others and um, there's a lot of suffering in the world today um, and I'm not saying that the impoverished are the only ones who are suffering right mm -hmm. um, but they are suffering and that's clear and it's mm -hmm. clear to to everyone and so the church needs to send out um, the the help <laughs> to, to serve these people well right. I know you visited Ukraine. I want to talk about that in the next segment. But uh, 1411 Locust Street, do you need volunteers there to get that uh, facility back open? Uh, you know, at, at some point we will need volunteers, maybe who are skilled laborers who are willing to volunteer their time mm -hmm. and, to, um, and their skills to help us fix the building up. But right now um, we're really in need of an attorney who, who can help us fight this next stage, this next level. Because again, we strong we think we have a strong case that um, the city is revoking our First Amendment right to practice our religion um, in that location. And 
Uh, we have been really clear that we're not trying to open up a shelter. We're trying to be a resource to our community. Mm -hmm. We're trying to help serve uh, not even just the homeless, but all of those in downtown who may find themselves in need. And uh, we want to be a light in downtown as a church. And so that's primarily what we're, we're striving to do. Once again, how can they reach you and you know, offer this help? Yeah, please give me a call at 314-887-8113, 314-887-8113, or give me an email at carice at nlecstl.org. Can they come by 2428 Woodson Road and offer their services here also? Yes, please do. Come by 2428 Woodson Road. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to get you plugged into the work here at New Life. Uh, there's always a lot that's going on, and um, you have skills and you have gifts that we can use here to, um, to serve other people in need. Great. Chris Aaron Rice, Pastor Chris Aaron Rice of New Life, Eva New Life Evangelistic Center is my guest, and we'll be right back after this. Are you feeling down and out? I want to encourage you to experience hope in God's creation. How you can go for a walk in a local park or in the woods or even along the ocean and experience hope at this time. It's all outlined for you in this free book that I'll send you. If you just write me and request such, you can write me Larry Rice, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166, and request your book, Experiencing Hope in God's Creation, or call us at 314-421-3020. And today's guest is Fred Shelsworth, born March 18, 1922, in Mount Meigs, Alabama. He was a Baptist minister and one of the South's most prominent civil rights leaders. He worked closely with Dr. Martin Luther King, co-founding the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and organizing direct action protests in Birmingham, refusing to waver even after multiple attacks. Shelsworth became a pastor of Birmingham's Bethel Baptist Church in 1953, and after the Brown v. Board of Education ruling, he was further inspired by to actively participate in the growing civil rights movement. He called for the hiring of African-American police officers, and with the outlawing of the NAACP in his home state, Shelworth established the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights in 1956. He also co-founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference with others such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Bayard Rustin. In 2007, Fred Shelworth moved back to Alabama, where he died on October 5, 2011, at 89, Fred Shuttlesworth. If we had not had the safe houses open, what would your life be like now? I probably wouldn't be here, you honestly. Really mean that? Yeah, because the depression kicks in, the fear, everything that God wants us, wants us not to have, it will kick in because you feel alone. New life makes me feel like I'm no longer alone. And honestly, yeah, I really believe I wouldn't be here because I would wouldn't have felt the need to want to be here because I was all alone. Welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. Pastor Chris Aaron Rice is my guest from the New Life Evangelistic Center. Uh, Pastor Rice, you recently visited the Ukraine. Not the Ukraine, but Ukraine. What was your mission there? Yeah, actually, it was last year we went mm -hmm. to Ukraine and um, we spent two and a half weeks serving um, in a variety of different churches people who had fled from the east to the west, mm -hmm. um, who had lost everything. And so we were serving by, um, by sharing their stories. We were serving by bringing the financial support that we had raised before um, our trip. And we were able to really bless those churches and support them and help them in their mission to serve people who were experiencing homelessness in Ukraine as they fled. And by homelessness, I mean, they did have shelter. They had a place where they could stay. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them did, but uh, they had lost everything. They, they had lost everything to the brutal nature of this war. And so our trip was successful in many different ways, um, but it taught me a lot. Taught me a How lot. did it impact you? Well, um, Ukraine is... Uh, a country that I love dearly. My, my wife is Ukrainian, but beyond that, this was my fourth trip to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, three times before the war and, and one since the war began. And it impacted me in a, in a very big way because I saw um, incredible grief, incredible despair and, and hopelessness 
And I also saw how the Lord was using this war to really draw many to him. So you had, you had two groups of people, some who uh, were in utter despair and grief, complex grief, grief. And then you had some who were really coming to the Lord maybe for the first time. And there's kind of this revival that's going on in Ukraine where many are accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior because of the devastation of this war and the, the experience of churches loving them well mm -hmm. in the midst of that suffering, uh, we've got a lot of people who, who are really coming to Christ. Uh, how can you compare uh, those who were homeless and unsheltered in, the, in Ukraine to those here on the streets of St. Louis and St. Louis area? Well, when you are suffering from the loss of uh, all that you've built, you know, mm -hmm. I talked to someone this morning who had only really been experiencing homelessness for a couple of months, and they just said, this is so hard. Mm -hmm. um, it's so hard to be out here. It's so dangerous. We really feel like um, there's not much hope. And I said, well, what keeps you going? And he says, really, just my faith. And I think that people in Ukraine, to, to some extent, only have hope because they have faith in God that, um, if they're breathing another day, then they can use that day to glorify Him. Um, and not everyone thinks about it in, in those terms, but I saw suffering at a real deep level, both in Ukraine and I see it here in the United States, as people experience hardship. And I think that's probably the, the, the key similarity between people who are experiencing homelessness here. There are a lot of differences as well. What would you say to those experiencing mental crisis? Do you offer any solitude or solutions here at the New Life Ambassador Center? Our program offers the ability to work on all different areas of life. So mm -hmm. we're a holistic ministry. We want to approach all the different areas. We do not have professional uh, psychiatrists or psychologists on our staff, mm -hmm. but we do try to build relationships with uh, other agencies who do. And so if someone comes to us uh, to receive care, that's going to be part of their care is that we would help them get connected to the resources that they need. Um, it's very difficult to remain sane when you are experiencing homelessness sure. and the and the issues that all of that comes with. When you're constantly in a state of fear and you're constantly in a state of confusion and lack of sleep and, um, and it really impacts your heart and your mind in a really big way. Your grandfather, mother and father, did they instill this love of people in you through their, your DNA? <laughs> well, I don't know if there's a like a, a love of people gene that they just passed on. I really think um, that it's been developed over the years through practice. Um, I think that you can't really, I think you can learn to love people well. I think that's a skill that you can learn. It's not something that you're just struck with. But you actually, it's like a muscle that you've got to practice. Mm -hmm. And that means, um, that means getting out there and finding out what their real needs are and practically filling those to the best of your ability. Okay, Chris, Aaron, Rice, we want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for what you are doing, your parents are doing, and those around you are doing here at the New Life Evangelistic Center. Thank you. And we're asking you to continue to support Capital. New Life Evangelic Center, and also NLEC-TV, Channel 24.2. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day. Until next time. <laughs>